All right, so here we go. So our, this is the beginning of our game, right? So we have to import a couple things in order for it to work. We import random, we have to import math. Another thing we have to import is pi game, and that, that is what allows us to play, to do a bunch of this stuff. Are we doing No. It, you can basically ignore every up until here. So this, what is this, guys, right here? Keys equals false, 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 false. It's a list, right, of four separate Boolean values. False, 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 false. But then if you press a key, one of them becomes true. Correct. Right here we have our player position. This is where the player starts out 100 pixels in and 100 pixels down. In the screen, we have our accuracy. Instead, now this, please stop that. This could be done with accuracy, one, like shots fired and shots hit. What this is, Bradley. What this is keeping a track of is when you, every time you hit the space bar, one of these values goes up and every time an arrow hits a bad guy, the other one goes up and then you divide the two to get your accuracy. All right. So instead of having shots hit, shots fired and shots hit, two different variables, you just have one list. Again, here are bad guys. What is, what does this look like? Coordinates. Coordinates. What else? A list. How many? A two no. dimensional list. A two dimensional list. That's what I'm looking for. So you have one list here and one list here. Now, what this is, is this is a list of the coordinates of the bad guys. Every time a bad guy spawns, its coordinates are added to this list. So it will just continue to grow every time. Right, exactly. So let's say we had four bad guys and they would all have different coordinates of 120 by 5, 500 by 489, 456 by 98, and 100 by 200. So what this is doing, how many elements are in this list? Four. Four. So I, that means I have four bad guys running on the screen. Does that make sense? Yeah. What the computer does is at each one of these coordinates, we're going to put an image of our badger. Or snake. Or, or whatever bad guy. In our game, it's a badger. Does that make sense? Yes. Every time, what are you paying attention, Bradley? Okay. Um, and every time in the game, we code this so that they move to the left. Okay, so I'm going to start drawing stuff on the board and it will hopefully help. So if this is our screen and our guy starts here, the video game, this is zero, zero, this is 600 or whatever, and this is 700. So wherever this guy is, we're going to say he's at 100. So this is our badger. He has become fabulous, I may say. Thank you. Whatever. That, that's our badger. Our code will take, will subtract. So he's at 100 right now, 600. Actually, it's the other way around. So are we shooting these badgers? Yes. So this is his position. We code it so that every time it loops through, he loses seven. This goes down by seven. So he scoots over seven pixels, and then his image gets put right there. And then it goes, it loses seven pixels, and then it gets put right there. Seven more. And the only thing that's changing is this number. It was 593 minus 7 is 586, blah, 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 until it gets to zero. Then we get rid of that, that um, we get rid of that badger. Does that make sense? So the entire game, our entire bad guy, our entire, where anything is moving in the video game, what it is, it's a set of coordinates and an image that's put at that coordinate. Is the entire is most video games. 
So that's why when you have a thousand bad guys on screen, your computer or your, or your Xbox starts to slow down because it's trying to keep track of a thousand different coordinates and putting a thousand pictures or a thousand 3D model, models at that coordinate and keeping track of how where they're moving. Plus how many bullets you're shooting and things like that. Does that make sense? Our entire game is based on lists. Yes. Okay. So, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Now we have our, uh, air, oh, hang on. Ah, there we go. Now we have arrows. Arrows is an empty list, correct? Arrows has three values. So my dude is here. And he's a bunny, so. And he has his little crossbow. And I'm going to give him a recurve. That's not a crossbow. I know, I just can't draw a crossbow. <laughs> so when he shoots, if he's aiming, if he's looking this way, his arrow, the image needs to look like that, right? It needs to be horizontal. If he's shooting this way, his arrow needs to be going in that look like that. And then if he's shooting straight down, oops, I screwed that one up. The arrow, the image needs to switch. So going off of what we know of the bad guys, they have an X and Y position. How many things does this thing need? How many elements would it take to move the image of an arrow across the screen? At least how many? One. One, three. Well, it depends if it's going up and down and straight or just straight. What? You didn't unlock it. All right. So we have one and three. What? Three hundred and sixty. Three hundred and sixty. Wait, no. I'm confused. What is the question? The question is: At least how many elements doesn't does the arrow need in order to move? At least how many elements as in X and Y? Yes. One. No. The individual arrow needs an X and a Y position. And a what? Z. Z? I know what you're thinking. It's not Z. It would technically be, in math, is it theta? It's just a random angle. And oh, yeah. theta. Right? I'm an algebra. The theta is basically what angle are we going to rotate the image? If we're not gonna inv if we're not gonna rotate it at all, so this one, the theta here, is gonna equal zero. Whatever. The theta here is gonna equal forty-five. And the th oh, two seven yeah. Oh, wait. What's three three twenty five, three fifteen? The theta here is going to be two seventy. Does that make sense? Because on our this is zero degrees, this is 90, 180 degrees, and 270. You guys familiar with the Cartesian Cartesian plane Cartesian or Cartesian plane? No. In math? No. Have you have you drawn um, I've never drawn a compass. Like have you drawn a compass? Have you have you drawn graphs X and Y on graph paper before? Yes. Okay. So that's if you can do that, you're fine, right? This is just explaining if I have an image, if the original okay, image, don't use the fancy language. if the original image is this, right, and I want it to appear like this on the screen, what's my theta? 180 degrees because I want to rotate the image a certain number of degrees. So our arrows are going to have three different elements in the list, an X, a Y, and a theta. 
And what you're going to do is you are going to, I'll explain how this works, but you're basically going to say the top left of the image is going to go here. And how much you rotate the image is dictated by that. So you call upon these individual elements in each list for every single arrow. And that's how you put information on a screen. It just, it just loops through lists. And for every list, wherever every element in the list, it puts an arrow at the X and Y position, rotates it a certain amount, goes through all of the arrows, and then jumps onto all of the bad guys and goes, where do we need to put all the bad guys? And then puts an image of the bad guys there, and then it just, it just keeps looping the entire game. Yes, Blake? Do we have another chapter, or are we like starting the game? You're not starting the game. The reason I'm taking today is because for 20 minutes, I figured because we're going to spend the next week-ish that doing stuff that doesn't really have anything to do with lists, and then we're jumping back into the video game, we're starting the video game, I wanted you guys to get a little more information, a little more in depth with lists and why you would use them and how we're using them for the video game. Does that, did that make sense or was that just kind of rambling? Makes sense. Makes sense. I'd rather you guys get a little more and understand lists a little bit more now than wait a week and a half and then jump back into lists. What's the chapter you doing? String manipulation. So what we're going to do is how do we code if, if we have if whatever equals equals Yes, because we're asking them, do you want to keep doing something? What happens if they type Y, E, uh, lowercase s? Yeah. This does not equal that. How do we code for that? That's, that's kind of what we're doing the next, uh, starting tomorrow. So it's really cool, and it's really useful stuff. Because then you can use this to go, what do you want your character's name to be? And you can type it in. And then you can put that information in your video game. Whatever. Um, what time is it? I got six minutes. Do you guys understand why why we're using a list? Yes. Do you guys understand how the game puts something somewhere? Yes. Are there any questions? in any way about program about Python or stuff we're learning in class or lists. Not yet. Not yet. Oh I realize I should have made this this part of the video bigger. Well now they can So no questions. Nada. Zilch. Not really? Three out. Okay, that's fine. Is there any homework? Yes. Not for today. You had a quiz, so you're good. Yay! Yay. Unless you're missing something, or I've talked. No, I think. No, I think we're all set. I think everyone's turned everything in that they're supposed to. Um, okay. Well, I'm gonna stop the video.